here that I have an accent. So I hope that will all work well. And I work in, in particular in this space that we just heard. It's a fantastic panel discussion. I love this. I spent a couple of years in backup. And whenever I hear backup, you think about, ah, there is this file I would need to take back. But when something really happens, you don't need the backup. You need that you had disaster recovery beforehand. I love the discussion about the passwords. The best password you can have is called incorrect. If you don't know, it's always written. Password is incorrect. Don't use that. So what I would like to cover is about the time that we are living in. So I spent years in IT. I've been with HP for a long time. And what I know about how you store data, how you make this available, it gets more and more complex. And we're also in a time where we have all these disruptions. When I came to Australia, 2016, I heard about drought. I heard about an experienced bushfires. And we thought, that is the biggest challenge, which sharpened our resilience. But then we realized there's something more, and the next is coming. And the next challenge is coming. So you see all of these different terms. And for business owners fighting for talent, you see then also words like this one, um, like um, with a great resignation, which is more reshuffle, and now you hear this quiet quitting and everything. How can you then really keep the best talent? How can you provide for them the right place where they can work at? And that is difficult. And especially we're living in an area where the employees are more empowered than beforehand. The first company I came to in Australia after leading a team in Europe across 29 countries where my work was remote from 2010 onwards. And the first thing I heard from my boss to say, we started at 30. Doesn't matter where you live. Only because part of the company, they had a kind of an essential function to it, where customers would call for support from 8.30 onwards. This means also salespeople should do this. But in the meantime, it changes. So it was only maybe 5% in the US who had the chance to adopt the option of, um, you see it on the left-hand side, uh, to work remotely. More could, but they didn't. And now we have this massive shift. And I explained this, the challenge on this, with these two, uh, two pieces of paper. I could have been also using Lego bricks. Take a line which is at the bottom, and then the pandemic hit, and there's this big wall that organization didn't know how to manage all of this. So had to quickly build a piece of technology processes and not even a chance to ask anyone how that works with a big issue on trusting the workforce. Now, two years later, we know a little bit how that works, and we need to get this on a smaller scale ongoing. So this is your view, it's not my view. We start here, building something, it's maybe too much, and how can we deal with that? So I would like to talk about this. So you can see even here that seven out of 10 workers will refuse a job that doesn't offer flexibility. What was my dream? I came as a tourist from a cruise ship to Sydney and realized how would it great, how great would it be to commute by ferry from Mosman to work at Martin Place. Finally, since August, I am there. But we at GoTo, we have software for remote work. We don't have the office anymore, only the official address. So I work from home, despite finally at Martin Place, my dream. Anyway, so then that is a tricky thing, how that can be done. And we know of one gentleman who acquired a company and told them, Forget about remote work and anything like this. Now you need to come to the office. And he kicked out half of them. I've been working in social media beforehand. So we are in an area where we expect from IT one thing, to be always on, to be all there for us, same way as it has been beforehand. So this means business continuity, which is far more than backup, should work also in my home. But from a legal perspective, if I just print out a proposal for a customer which has some kind of confidential information, and then my cleaning lady comes in, I have a problem. But how would anyone know about this? And then those people who work on reachable functions for a company, not work all from home, how does it work in terms of call center functionality? I had a look at the big call centers from HP where you call where the printer doesn't work. Fantastic how this how it's done with sound and everything, but these people are now working from home. Can smaller business have a contact center solution that it works from home? Uh, yes, that works. And then we expect that everything is also running. We went 
to the IT guy and said, hey, something here is not going well. Can you help me? And they fix it. And they're great people. But they're not in my home. And that is a big, big challenge. How we can solve this? And how can even create a meeting with everyone, what we would call a town hall meeting, uh, maybe not an Aussie term, but more American one, and we don't have the hall anymore. And you might have seen, when you attend a virtual meeting, everyone is there remotely, with maybe showing picture or not, so maybe more, more casual there and more with a tie over there. It's nice when everyone is this way. OK, you get it. But facilitating a hybrid approach is one of the biggest challenges. You need to have a facilitator who enables, so when then there's a question from there, we all get it, but not the audience there, who is then only virtually there. That, these are challenges on it, and we expect also to connect from everywhere. But as we just also heard, I personally love working in a cafe. I wrote a range of books. My new one will be written exclusively in a cafe. But why would I even take their Wi-Fi? How would I know? When we got the B1 double-deckers here in Sydney, I thought, oh, that's cool. They at least have a power socket. But how would I know if I connect only power or even more? Maybe better I don't do that. Maybe better I charge beforehand. So these are all the challenges that we have where we expect that even from every endpoint we are using, it can be connected and can work remotely well. And we heard about the trend of consumerization of IT. Bring your own device, we heard that term beforehand as well. So this means we would expect that all of this works together. Unfortunately, who are the heroes on it? The IT guys that we have in our companies, or if we don't have, we work with a managed service provider. But they have now the trouble on this one to manage this properly. The workforce is now distributed. We expect to work from all over the place. I spent two and a half years working at Hootsuite, that is software for social media management. There was no sleep, there was always something on. Glad that I'm now on, on the ANZ uh, time zones. 82% of companies in a recent survey they found out it's quite difficult to support remote workers in the same level as though they would get it in the office. How can we make this happen? Especially when you then add, you need to have more costs for every employee working at home. Not just having a webcam or better screen, but also when it comes to the whole protection around that, that's quite costly. And the same study, which is actually from, uh, from last year, but uh, quite accurate on this one, says also it's harder to communicate and to collaborate when you're away from the office. And there are some, some interesting challenges. Oh, I'm, I'm muted, sorry. So uh, the, it became normal that, that, you all, that you ask yourself how that actually works to connect the people properly. And you deal with so many devices, so many apps, processes, regulations. And we all think as normal human beings, why does it not work? I see it in this app, not on that one. Integrations is one of the biggest challenges. I had the pleasure of studying computer science when the word API didn't exist yet, advanced programming interface. And I thought, what's missing? That these two tools talk together. And my learning was automotive industry with Ford, Mercedes, and Volkswagen. My learning was politics. Sometimes the organization don't want that. Wouldn't it be better? But life is not always like this. So there was a recent survey done in August and September this year. 3,700 participants, a third here also in, in Australia and in Singapore. And business on, on, uh, on the B2B base, they were asked about likelihood of a recession. So then you can get some of these numbers over here. But interesting is how many of them are confident in weathering a financial storm? Australia alone, the data was 82%. UK is 42%. They have other troubles. We know that. So we are in a better space here, at least. And the employee morale has been improved, thankfully, because particularly here in Australia, we had organizations who enabled a bit more of a flexible workforce. Disclaimer, not valid for essential services. A dentist can't. Even the hairdresser sometimes cannot really get the customers at home with all equipments. So, but at least that, that improved. And of course, it's uh, 
the topics that are going on there are it's written here, the pandemic, obviously, but also inflation and supply chain. And these are things which are coming more and more. While connecting the employees with IT that works and getting support for that is vital because if you don't have that, then the cost of being out of business for a while is heavy. That makes no sense. 59% reported the IT supports has been scaled back. You want to solve something? Oh, nobody can serve. Uh, we don't have the people anymore. Hard to get labor. So what we need is to stay connected. That's obvious between customers and employees. If we serve our employees well, they can look well after the customers. But who is in between? Who is the most important role in between to make that happen? And these are our IT guys. And they have the big, massive challenge to get everyone connected. And even over the years, we heard the word from digital transformation from PRIA, organizations are consolidating all of this one. That gets into a couple of topics. You see this here? There was a study who says in one year in the US, $108 trillion of lost revenue for not being connected, for having outages, for the use of, of, of certain uh, uh, let's say, uh, challenges that happen, and cybersecurity we also spoke about. Uh, anyone know the term of zero trust architecture? Works like this. Normally, you would think about we are in a room like here, there's someone is a guard who stands outside and only lets those in who registered, and we are in a safe place. That's how we know IT as well. You put your password on, okay, done. You're in. You're trustworthy. But then you're hacked, and we're all in the same boat. Not good. Trust between people is lovely, but not on IT. So the zero trust architecture means that every single device, endpoint, everything, every process need to always, in 100% of cases, being checked. If anything doesn't work well, then it's not good. And these are the, um, some of the steps that need to be done. Have you ever heard about video conferencing experience which was bombed. I had the experience. I spoke in front of 200 people, and then someone hacked in there. It was a time when that software, which I don't name, didn't have passwords on it. And somebody wrote something strange on the screen and had been laughing inside. The IT administrator had 10 minutes, and they fixed it to send every 200 people a new link, a secure link, instead of doing this at, in, at the beginning. Unfortunately, then my time slot was over. Not good. Not good. So there are big challenges. And my colleague Dobek, he said, investing in the right technology to allow our employees to stay connected without blowing tech budgets will be key. Because with all the challenges, it goes up. We talked about ransomware. I call it ransomware as a service. These hackers who do this, they're also a business, typically small business, well connected. They only want one thing, get some money for it. And they go for it. So, but how can we be flexible, sustainable, and collaborative? Which for me has three requirements. The first one is the mindset. I have plenty of friends who would say, oh, I need to have two-factor authentication. I need to now find my phone. I need to do this or that. But there's one thing they don't say in the morning. Oh, I need to brush my teeth. It's in their DNA. They're like, ah, oh, feel fresh in the morning. That's good, cool. Why we don't do it here? So in my view, a lot of things from a user point of view is a mindset topic. If technology is there, but to use it, to insist on it, to ask and challenge our companies to say, you work with all these apps, why they're not connected? It costs only this much more. Go for it. It would be much better. So the mindset is something which often is not talked on the IT side. The second one I found is on leadership. And leadership. I found in Australia many companies treated the employees very often a bit more directive, like that former boss who said 8.30, because missing trust. But if there's a missing trust from leaders to the employees, in my view, it's also a lot about their fault not to hire well, not to enable, not to create the culture for this. And that is a topic. I'm also board director in one of the hotels here in Sydney, and therefore I have leadership even, even above this type of uh, C-suite sector and um, can also say that this trust building exercise is so important 
And then when COVID hit and you had this piece of paper which was tall, everyone had to, had to struggle with this one. So then we need to go through this as well. And only then, when the mindset for everyone is properly, when, the, when, we, have, when we can advance our leadership skills, not only from manager to individual, then we get into the topic and being ready to request the right level of tools. And unfortunately, many organizations have so many. Mid-sized organization might have three different tools for unified communication, but rarely integrated, different teams, and that is a big struggle. So therefore, you might have heard a tool called LastPass. We talked about that, good. That used to be also owned, or is still owned by our company, but you might have heard a tool called GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar. That's where the name Goto comes from. Until early this year, the company was called LogMeIn. So that uh, also tells us something, that some kind of important process on it. But as the go-to products were quite, uh, quite known, it basically has been rebranded into this one. The challenge that ID has is, how many tools do we need? But can we consolidate something of them to save not only subscription costs, but also to ensure that it runs better together? If I have people who have kind of a contact center function, replying to incoming calls from customers. Why it's not integrated with social media? Why it's not it's the same type of app that I use for a regular normal phone? And that's called go to connect so that exists already. And then the other way is, how can we as organizations support our employees in having tools to manage remotely? So when I then see there's something not going well, Michael, with your computer, I, as IT, I see this before you see this, and I solve it already, but in a, please, in a zero trust architecture way, before you see that there's a, tro uh, it's a trouble. So these are the more proactive ways how you can manage IT well on a larger scale. So we have uh, the software that we use is for HP, Microsoft, in their call centers from the enterprise side. But we here, we are not enterprises. So we need something more nimble, more for, for, uh, for, for um, uh, SMB organizations. And that is a product which I'm responsible for called GoToResolve. And that is a way how IT can be managed as easy as possible, covering more functions together in one single app and as secure as possible. Two-factor authentication is fine. I now need to have add even a third number to ensure that something else gets in there before I can connect properly. And I see this in a sense of, and there's a term in this building called pleasure and profit. So I need to first see the pleasure in my mindset. I want to work in a secure place. And then I don't mind that I have to have this extra level. And then the profit can come. So these are the type of tools which are out there in one uh, nice connected way. And therefore, I strongly believe what we should do, we should support our different teams with the right mindset. And that is a people-to-people -people discussion. When we have done that, we enable trust. Because in the meantime, after two years, many leaders and employees realize how they can work together even beyond that. And if we are working from anywhere, instead of always from the office, we need to ensure that we still meet our colleagues. In two months, I've had more meetings despite not having an office with my colleagues and customers than in two years in my last company. The question how we can make that happen and that is a leadership topic. And then what we need to be successful is to have IT that works as easy from everywhere as possible. The world is not remote. The world is not office only. The world is flexible. Some food for thought. And I know I'm the one before lunch. Any question, please ask me at lunchtime. Otherwise, thank you for listening. <laughs>